uh, are we going to get out of this one day? Ama yeah. this is what the real reality of life is. First of all, let's just go through his uh, titles again. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Gedenji <laughs> Yetahi, yes. MBS, <laughs> father, husband, GCEO, AMREF uh, Africa. That means global CEO. Mm -hmm. Okay, Commissioner, Africa COVID-19, serves in the Africa CDC Board, Women Lift, SMG, Safaricom Foundation, Unilever Special Council, and God's Servant. Now, the last one is a big one, mm. God's Servant. Public service, public, public health. Mm. Is that how you got into... Did you just start updating people on COVID by yourself? Mm -hmm. Or was it part of you being part of the Commission of Africa COVID? No, it was personal passion. It personal. was just, yeah, it was just myself. So when these things started coming up, I started to study a lot about it and started to look around. And therefore, I had a voice to contribute. I had knowledge to contribute. And mm -hmm. therefore, you guys, the media, yeah. started to call me because mm -hmm. then... I was tweeting about it. I was talking about it on my Facebook platform, Instagram. So that's how it came. It was personal effort, completely personal effort. But then what happened is that, like now my appointment as commissioner of the COVID-19 commission mm. was after my contribution. Yeah. It wasn't pre, uh -huh. but I've always been on the Africa CDC board. But more recently now, I've been appointed to the Pandemic Preparedness Council, which is called CEPI, just because of my work. So again, it's, it's just personal effort and passion. So it's initiative. What you yes. said wow. before, yes. you being available for something, you're already doing it before, then it happens. It happens. And yeah. then also, the, you know, this thing I call social justice gives you a bag of wanting to help people uh -huh. constantly. You want to, so when I see people struggling, I'm like, no, 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 this is the way you're supposed to do it. When I started contributing to COVID, mm. I still remember it was a Saturday of Easter and two of my friends called me and said their fathers had collapsed. Oh, and that's man. the day I said, what is going on? And I did a video on how people need to watch out for confusion in elderly people. I talked about how to use a pulse oximeter. And I put the video on my Twitter page, just out of wanting to save people. And somebody called me and said, hey, pulse oximeters are going over the pharmacy. What's going on? It wasn't because somebody told me, go do this video and post. Because No, it's just, I just wondered, how can my friends lose their fathers? How many yeah. other people who don't good. know me are losing their fathers? Exactly. So out of, completely out of personal initiative. Um, so where where are we now? Because everyone says you, you know during COVID it's like it's over. Where mm. are we now? Yeah. As 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 a, as the public, especially in Kenya, uh, with this whole pandemic. So where we are is that we are in the middle of the pandemic, okay? The, whereas the number of infections may have waned, and we don't know for how long, the virus is still circulating. Even now we still have positive cases every day. Mm. I think yesterday we had um, a one percent, uh, you know positivity rate meaning out of every hundred tests done one was positive meaning mm -hmm. out of every thousand ten are positive so the virus is still around it's not going anywhere so the question to ask ourselves is how do we keep the virus at bay so that doesn't accelerate to infect many people that's why we must still continue to be careful about social distancing mm. where we can of course we want to allow economic activity mm. but the most important thing is because the virus is still here and you don't know when it triggers and reaches a tipping point and infects more people and comes to you are you vaccinated that's really the question to ask yeah not to bother is a pandemic here or not it's about am i prepared if the virus was to come how do i burglar proof myself and my family get vaccinated ah so let's talk about vaccines Mm -hmm. Very many things have happened uh, when people have got the vaccines. People have said they've suffered. The people I know, major hangovers. Others have suffered uh, what you what you call migraines. The people you know are more likely to have hangovers from other sources. That's what I was saying. Exactly. That's, all, that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, Others have said that yeah. their, their their monthlies have have become worse. Uh, yeah. uh, their period mm -hmm. has become worse. Others have said uh, like their blood pressure shot up. Now. Is there any truth to all this? Uh, what people are talking about is—is is it only—is it in your head? You see, it's always important to follow science, mm. and science says that any relationships that you find must be studied and confirmed. Because if I say, if I walk out of this studio and I go and I get hit by a car, I can't say I got hit by a car because I was at Capital FM. No. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Very so good. you have to then look at. How many people left this situation and went and got around? Then you're like, oh, is there a link? That's what we call a causal link. Yeah. Is, there, is there a relation? Then you study. And we know that the, there are side effects that are related to the vaccines. And you can clearly say this one is because of vaccination. But this other one is not because of vaccination. So what side effects are these? So we know, for example, that there was an association between vaccination and clotting. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. That was studied and it was shown that there is a link, but it was very low, but there was a link. Mm. But it was li- really, really low. Uh, we know also that, um, you know, th- there were relationships of vaccinations and people getting an inflammation of the muscle of the heart, something called myocarditis. Again, very, very low. And those, there was a causal link. But this other, there's no causal link. There is none. So people say those are called coincidences. And some of them may be related by other factors. For example, we know that if I'm a woman and I'm stressed, it's likely that my cycle will change. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It happens. Mm-hmm. You know, before exams, you yeah. say, you know, maybe you're... So if you're stressed because you received a vaccine, you had pain, you had high fever, it's likely that your cycle could change because of that stress. But is there a causal link with the vaccine itself? None has been proven okay. through science. So this is what we need to keep in mind. Oh, yeah. Another question Very that good. came through uh, from a couple of friends was, uh, and actually people here at Capital was uh, about a sixth wave that we've been hearing about here in Africa. Do you believe that we will experience a sixth wave, a sixth wave of COVID? You see, it goes back to what I said earlier, that viruses don't go anywhere. They're not eliminated. Uh-huh. Viruses remain. In fact, after infecting people, the only reason COVID infected us as it did is because it is new. And our immunity is naive. It has never seen that virus before. Mm. So it therefore just came and found an unprepared body. Mm. Over time, we build immunity, either by being infected earlier or being vaccinated. The virus doesn't go anywhere. What changes is the immunity in our body, what we call the host condition. Mm. Now, is the, are we likely to get a six wave? Yes, of course, because the virus is still here. So it will still do another wave, whether it will be big or small, you don't know. So we know that South Africa had a small wave that yeah. went up and down. Is Kenya going to have one? I looked at yesterday's positivity. We were at 1%. Before, we've been at 0.5, 0.4. Mm-hmm. Is it likely that the rise from 0.5 to 1 is actually an indicator that we are going to get into a six wave? It's possible. Until we see the trends, we can't say. So it's likely we may get a six wave. Yeah. The biggest question is when the wave comes and you get infected because you will, because the virus, you can't avoid the virus, mm-hmm. it's in the air. Are you vaccinated? Do you have the adequate immunity to ensure that when the virus infects you, you don't get severe disease and end up in hospital? So people should stop worrying about what they can't control. You can't control the virus. You can limit it, but you can control it. But can you control your immunity? Yes, by getting vaccinated. So focus on what you can control. So uh, when we come back, we shall discuss...